to share with you a dream. It, it made me laugh, you know. I was talking to a, a different intercessor in Georgia. She knows who she is, and she'll be listening to this. And it, it's ridiculous. This is just a ridiculous dream. I fell asleep, and I had two dreams, one right after the other. And the first one, I was speaking to her, and I said, this could not possibly be a prophetic dream. But when I got, I woke up out of that dream, I was literally laughing out loud. It was so hilarious. And I said, Lord, what kind of an imagination do I have to dream such a ridiculous dream like this? And I laughed so hard. I was laughing in my sleep, and I was laughing when I woke up. And I continued to laugh throughout the day every time I thought about this ridiculous dream. And when I shared it with her, she said, Miss June, that's a prophetic dream. You don't know how that ministers to me right now. And I said, it's just absolutely ludicrous. It's ridiculous. And then she said, no, no, it's not. So I'm going to share this dream with you. And it is funny. Um, because the devil, he doesn't play by the rules. Isn't that true? He, he's, he's, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. When the thief comes to your house, he doesn't knock on the door. He doesn't ring the doorbell. He breaks through to steal. You know, so we have to always be vigilant and on guard because we have to be prepared for the things that we're not prepared for because he's always sneaking up on us. He's that roaring lion seeking whom he may be loved. The Bible says to resist steadfast in faith. So in this dream, and I shared this with uh, um, Pastor Laurel and Pastor John um, this week, that uh, I saw this community. It was a, a, a small community, and they were good people. And there was one person in that community that broke all the rules, was always caring for himself, didn't care about anybody else, and was always underhanded, doing, you know, breaking all the rules and had no concern for anybody there, going to do whatever he wanted and against people. So he was always rebelling and coming against people in that community. And so there was always a problem with him. But anyway, in my dream, uh, he came into the community. When he came into the community, and it was dark out, probably in the wee hours of the morning, probably maybe um, 3 o'clock in the morning, 2 or 3 in the morning, or maybe later a little bit. But no light in the community was on anywhere. Everybody was in bed sleeping. And so then he comes into the community. Does this thing work? Let's see if it works. It doesn't. I'm just going to go up here for a minute so I can do this. So he comes in, and there's not a light on, and no activity, and everybody's bedded down, and everybody's at peacefully sleeping. And he just stands there in the middle of the street, and he goes, And he woke everybody up. They were startled. They were so frightened by this. And they were so angry with this person for disturbing the peace, disturbing the little children, disturbing the moms and dads, everybody in the whole community. Every light came on, and they were all afraid. Just by one word, boom! You know? And when I woke up, I was laughing about this. I thought it was funny that he could startle people with just one word, and that he controlled the whole community, and this is what Satan does. He comes like a roaring lion, and his boo is bigger than his bite. His roar is bigger than his bite, but he is seeking whom he may devour, but you've got it made that you can resist him steadfast in the faith. That he may threaten you. He may startle you. He comes in a time when you are peaceful. Has that ever happened? A surprise attack? Surprise, surprise. You know, you're not prepared for that news. You're not prepared for that sound. You're not prepared for that attack. That thief, that robber, that disturbance. 
in your life. You can be just going along in life and everything seems to be the same. And you know, you might be a little bored with it, but nobody's too bored to be in a position where they want the enemy to attack them, to give them a little excitement in life. Nobody needs that kind of agitation to get you out of your comfort zone, right? We would rather be bored than to be under attack. We would rather be just sedentary, you know, quiet, even kind of complacent, you know, in our own little corner of the world than to have this evil present come and attack us and roar at us and threaten us and jar us and intimidate us. And that's what the devil does. He, it's the spirit of intimidation is coming against the body of Christ. That's the community that's at rest. He said there remains a rest for the people of God. But really, you have to understand that even though we enter into that rest by faith in God, the devil's not going to sit there and fold his hands because you have the peace of God that passes all understanding. He comes to disturb your peace, to jar your little corner of the world, your life, your ministry, your family, your home, your job, wherever you are at school or whatever is going on in your everyday life. He's not happy with that. He doesn't seem to have anything to gain by disturbing you when you're sleeping and resting. Everybody's tucked in and everybody's safe. He comes in just with a boom! Wakes everybody up. Disturbs everybody, startles them. And you know when you were a kid and, and if you were just playing or whatever and one of your friends, or maybe not friend, would come up behind you and just sneak up behind you and go boom! Ever remember stuff like that? They're just shaken by that. You're kind of mad at them for, for disturbing you. You know, you're, you're, you're not expecting it. So it's the unexpected attacks of the enemy that scares us, that wakes us up, but not to wake us up to do the things of God. You know, the church I'm not talking about, this is not an illustration about the sleeping church. This is about the church that's at rest. That remains for you and I. But the devil isn't happy about you resting, about you having your family all tucked in and all is well and all is peaceful. He's coming to disturb your peace. And so he does it with racket. There's a lot of racket going on in our lives that we did not invite into our community. It's never anything that lines up with the word of God. Everything Satan does is contrary to the rules. God is a God of absolutes. And everything that God says, Satan contradicts with his lies. And he's not going to comply. And he's contrary to the word of God, the work of God, the will of God, the peace of God, the power of God, the presence of God, the spirit of God. And he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And primarily, your peace and your rest. Because God wants us to have peace and rest regardless of the boo. And we have to realize that when I was laughing and waking up and laughing about that was that he disturbed the entire community and they were all extremely scared and then they were all upset. All the lights came on and they were ready for war. And here he is standing there without a sword without a gun, without any weapon, and he disturbed them with just a word, just one word, to intimidate them, to scare them, and destroy their peace. And the devil does that. You know, there's the word of God, and then there's the word of Satan. And it's always contrary. And God gives us rest, and Satan comes to disturb and to destroy the works of God. But Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. So there's a constant warfare, and our warfare is oftentimes in our mind. 
You can have peace of heart without having any peace of mind. You, I will repeat that. Your heart will be tranquil because Jesus is our peace and he's in your heart. So what do we have to do when we have no peace of mind? Have no peace in our circumstances? Stir up the gift that's in you. What gift am I talking about that every child of God has? 100% that you have the spirit of God, you have the spirit of peace. Peace in the midst of the storm. Peace in the middle of the mess. Peace in the middle of the boom. You've got peace. So we stir that up. And the laughter came because I realized that he's standing there and all the community shook up and upset. But he didn't have anything but a boom. He didn't have anything to back it up. He could disturb the peace, but he could not destroy the peace. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you understand the difference between disturbing the peace and destroying the peace? Because you can't destroy the work of God. The word of God endures forever. He can't destroy that, but he can disturb that peace. But then what do you do to get it back? You stir up the gift within you. And the laughter comes because guess what? We're the children of the Most High God. So when God sees Satan coming as a roaring lion and raging and roaring against his people, and against his word, and against his work, and against his will, do you think that God is upset? Do you think that he's disturbed? Do you think that he can be conquered by a boo? He knows that Satan has no power, that he's empowered you, but you have to act on it. You know, stir it up. It's there. You know? I, I borrowed an illustration from Brother Ming years ago, who was the youth director of, of our organization that I was in at the time when I was a young person. And he was talking about stirring things up, and he said that when it came to the gravy, oh, he loved gravy, that homemade gravy. But he said, the longer that the gravy sits, like the milk gravy with the bacon or sausage, the longer it sits, the thicker it gets, right? And and it's you can't take that great big thick glob and eat that like that. So it gets cold and it gets thick. And he said, but what you need to do is, you know, you turn the heat up on it and you stir it. You stir that thick gravy in it and it just restores that wonderful gravy that he loved so much. My mother made that gravy all the time, and boy, it was the best. But definitely, certainly, if it was in the refrigerator, just sat on the stove for a while, it got thick and cold, and it got kind of crusty and on top, you know, just a kind of a layer of, of stuff on top, and we had to stir it up. And so it is with us that we need to stir these gifts that we have from God. The unspeakable gift is Jesus. But when you give Jesus, Jesus is your peace. Jesus is the Lord that heals you. He is your everything and your all. He is your strength, strength of your life and heart. And I love that scripture that tells us that he's the strength of our life. Because we already know beyond a shadow of a doubt that he's the strength of our heart. But then, when he's the strength of your life, that's a whole different thing. You can have peace in your heart, but not peace in your life until you stir it up and take that authority over the one that came to disturb your peace, which is the devil. 
he doesn't have the ability to still kill and destroy you. You have the ability to overcome every single time. 